just because the person that you are involved with, and it could be your parent, it could be a partner, a spouse, just because that they are in some ministry position and they're abusive towards you doesn't mean that, you know, they're not a narcissist. Like, listen, if somebody is truly seeking God, seeking God's heart, seeking to do God's will, if they truly have a servant's heart, because we're all servants, right? They, we should be anyway. If they truly have a servant's heart and a heart that seeks after God, they cannot and they should not be abusing other people because they are called to take care of the flock, to take care of the sheep. So when you say that or when you when you feel a lot of people feel, you know, conflicted. Well, how could they be religious? How could they know the Bible? Satan knows the Bible. He knows the word. He uses the word. The devil used the word even against Jesus and tried to trip him up, try to, you know, get him to stumble with the word. So you think that it wouldn't happen in the church? When we understand that at the forefront, primarily, narcissistic abuse is spiritual warfare. The, the three main things that you encounter in narcissistic abuse is it control, intimidation, and manipulation. Those three things are the hallmark signs of witchcraft. When somebody is trying to control you, that's witchcraft. When somebody is trying to intimidate you, that's a sign of witchcraft. When they are manipulating you, witchcraft. So when we have all those things working in tandem, you know that this is under a Jezebelic prince or under the Jezebelic principality. That's witchcraft. And so to say that because they know the word and yet they're doing these things to you, that, you know, there's something wrong with you and, you know, um, cognitive dissonance sets in and you just don't know which way to go. Listen, that is all emotional, psychological, spiritual abuse. Yes, they can be in the pulpit and they can be a narcissistic leader. That's a thing. But here's the thing. It's not every pastor who is like that. It's not every church that is like that. You have to begin to grow in your faith. You've got to have a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You've got to allow him to be your Lord and Savior and lead you to where he wants you to grow spiritually. He should be the one that leads you to your, your church family, your church home. But just because they know the Bible does not mean, you know, many are called, few are chosen. We know that for some people, the words will be, I don't know you. And so, you know, just allow that to, to sit with you and, and begin to go to the word of God, right? Because that's the standard, the word to let you, to help you define who people are in your life. God bless.